Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are all here with us today. The Sunday before Thanksgiving, we uh, we managed to actually go in and crash that young adult thing last night. It was really good turkey. If you want to know how to make your turkey for Thanksgiving, just go talk to Eric after the service. Did a fantastic job. So I'm glad you guys are here with us this morning. My name is Chaz, and this is Tyler and Elias and Heather, and we're excited to lead you all in worship this morning. So would you bow your uh, head with me, and let's just invite the Lord's presence here this morning. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we always gather here, Lord, with the hope and expectation of just encountering your spirit this morning. Lord, it's not about the songs that we sing, Lord, but we hope to encounter your spirit uh, through the songs and the prayers we offer up, Lord. It's not about um, just the teaching of the word, Lord, but encountering you in your word. So, Father, would you be just active here this morning, Lord? Would you move in our midst? Would you fill every aspect of our service with your presence? We love you, Father. Have your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you mind standing with me for worship? Yeah. 
because of you, we have a hope and we have a future. Yes, Father. Remember those walls in the week of sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we call death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. your name, Lord. And I thank you, Father, just as this song says, Lord, it says in your scripture that the love is who you are. That this is who you are. You love us. And because you love us, Father, that this is what you do, you save us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you can no longer deny loving us more than you can just deny who you are. 
And we praise you. We praise you this morning, Father. Thank you for the gift of your presence here with us. Thank you for your spirit. Have your way. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. If we want to start making our way back to our seats. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to, uh, yeah, thank you. Good morning. It's a good day in God's house, right? Give it up. Yeah. Welcome to Vineyard Church of the Springs. My name is Alexandra, and I will be giving our wonderful announcements today. So the first thing that you may have noticed is our lovely Connect card here that is on your seat. This is a great way to get plugged in with everything that's going on at our church, everything from prayer requests to special announcements to just any particular activity that we're going to be doing, potlucks, all that kind of good stuff. So make sure you fill that out front and back. And then... If you're visiting us for the first time, we also have a gift for you in the lobby. So if you're a first-time visitor, please get that lovely gift from us. Um, yeah, so if you didn't get when you came in, it's right there, right there in the corner. Now, our next fun announcement is we are going to decorate the church. Yes, woo! Yeah, we're going to get the, we got a church decorating party. That is Sunday, December 1st, right after service. So we will be decking the halls with Christmas cheer. So please plan on staying. You know, I'm, I'm sure Tim is leading the effort on that and him and all of his wonderful lights and, and things like that. So stick around. That's going to be um, a lot of fun. And then our next fun activity is our ladies Christmas cookie exchange party. So if you like cookies, and I love cookies all the cookies. I love to eat, personally. Yeah, so if you like cookies, that's going to be Friday, December 6th at 6.30. That's right going to be here. So this is the best time of the year when the best cookies are made. So we're going we're gonna to exchange, we're going to share, and uh, we'll also play games and share laughs as we enjoy cookies and a little bit of punch. So what you need is two dozen of your favorite cookies to share. I'll need three because I'll probably eat a dozen myself. Um, so bring two dozen cookies to share for exchange. And if you need more information, just fill out the comment section on the Connect card. So if you have questions about any of the activities, you can also put them on the Connect card and we will get back to you. Awesome. Let's, next, for our next group of guests, is our youth hangout. So. Thursday, December 12th at 6 p.m., our young folks are going ice skating. Ice skating is going to be a lot of fun. It's $20, but of course, scholarships are available. So if you want to go, just let us know. We'll figure out a way to get you there. It's going to be at Acacia Park, and it's going to be at 6 from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. So again, anyone can attend. We had a lot of fun last year, and we even got hot cocos from Dutch Bros when all was said and done. So Again, if you have any questions about it, you can also see Chaz, and you don't need to register. Just show up at Acacia Park at 6, and you will be good to go. And then lastly, our men. Woo! Give it up for our men. <laughs> Ladies having cookies, the men are going to be doing a huddle. That is Saturday, December 14th at 8 a.m., so join our men for the monthly men's huddle on December 14th at 8 a.m. Proverbs 27:17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So a men's huddle is the place where men can be authentic, they can get into deep conversation, sharpen one another, there's always good fun, good conversation, good company. So if you're wanting a chance to connect with other men here in the ministry, this is a great place to be. We're gonna get, um, they're gonna get breakfast burritos from Monica's Taco Shop. So if you like burritos, it's one thing I wish we could have a burrito exchange maybe for Liddy's, but <laughs> cookies, bur burritos. But breakfast burritos from Monica's Taco Shop. There's a $5 suggested donation for breakfast, but again, not required. We just want to see you there. So if you're coming, please mark it again on your lovely Connect card, right? And see Chaz if, you, um, if you're going to come, so that way they know how many people are going to be there. Now, with that being said, all the blessings of cookies and activities and ice skating is a lot made possible by our offering. So we believe that giving is an act of worship, and we always make space in our service to do so. It is recognizing that everything we have comes from God, and you can put your tithe or your offering in the box in the back wall back there, so we've got a box back there, or you can scan our lovely QR code that's here behind me and do your online giving. So when you give your tithes and offerings, they help support the ministry and all the wonderful work we, we do here, especially all those fun activities I just listed off. And um, yeah, we can see what God is 
especially doing in this ministry. So with that being said, let's uh, bow our heads, close our eyes so we can pray. Father God, thank you so much for an opportunity to be here, to be here in your presence, to worship together, and to thank you. Lord, just continue to bless every gift that comes in, whether it's one penny or $100, Lord God. Use it to do the amazing things that we have in this ministry and to reach people for Christ, because that's why we're here. Everything we have is because of you, and we love you, and we appreciate you, and we are so grateful for everything you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, amen. amen. All right, and now Jane will be bringing our teaching for today. Good morning. Good morning. Am I on? Yeah. All right. So, are you excited about Thanksgiving? Yeah. I need to talk to uh, Eric. We just took our uh, turkey out today, so I need to get some tips. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Today is the last day of our series on gratitude. We've been looking at um, various reasons why we're um, grateful for all that God does for us. This morning, I want to look at that we have a hopeful future because of who God is, not because of us, but because of who God is, we have hope for the future. And our key verse for this series has been <coughs> Ephesians 1, 3 through 8, and today I want to read it from the Passion Translation. It says, Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our hearts. He chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself, even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence, for it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the Anointed One, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. And this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. Since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood. The total cancellation of our sins. All because of the cascading riches of his grace. This superabundant grace is already working in us releasing within us all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. I mean, I could just finish now. To me, that says everything we need to know. But since I'm supposed to preach for about 20 minutes, I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so in review, Heather introduced our series on gratitude by explaining that there's a difference between gratitude and thankfulness. It's not based on a subjective feeling but on a choice, and we train ourselves until it becomes a habit. She talked about how gratitude has a foundation in the truth that we have God, his love, his kindness, provision, and grace. And then Jesus talk, uh, and then Chaz talked about um, that gratitude is based on Jesus. It's based on the fact that we have enough. He reminded us that if we have Christ, we have everything that we need. And so we need to focus on Christ. Last week, we celebrated getting our building. Christian talked about being grateful for each other. You know, it's not a church is not about the building. As excited as we are about having this building and all the things that we can do with it, a church is the people that you see around you. And so we need to be grateful for each other. And each of us has a part to play. So today, I want to talk about our hopeful future. But before we dive in, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have a perfect plan 
for us as a church, as individuals, as a nation. And I ask that you would take my words this morning and use them to minister to your people here and to those who listen online. Speak to us, encourage us, and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, God has plans for each of us. Some of those plans are for people in general, and some of those plans are specifically for each one of you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, here's what Yahweh says. I know all about the marvelous destiny I have in store for you, a future planned out in detail. My intention is not to harm you, but to surround you with peace and prosperity and to give you a beautiful future. So God never does things halfway. It's not like, he, you know, you were born and God was surprised. And he's like, oh, no, what do I do now? <laughs> I've got to come up with a plan for this person. No. Before the foundation of the world, he knew that you would be born in this time, and he had a plan for you here and now. He's never thrown for a loop. He, he doesn't say, oops, they messed up, that's it, I'm done with them. He's not unable to redeem our mistakes. Uh, so this morning, I want to look at three areas where God has a hopeful future for us. The first one is redemption. The verse that probably most people know, John 3:16. For this is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. So God's plan of redemption is for everyone. No one's left out, no one's excluded, no one is beyond hope. Doesn't matter what you've done, what you haven't done, God has a plan of redemption for you. But it depends on our choice to believe. You know, it's not that God zaps us and says, okay, now you're saved. It's everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And so one of the hardest concepts for me in scripture is the idea of free will. You know, here God made this wonderful creation, but he, he wanted us to be like him. And God has free will, so he gave us free will. And we all know the story of Adam and Eve. They messed up right from the beginning. But God did this deliberately. He gave us free will deliberately because he doesn't want just robots. He doesn't want some AI programmed person who does everything according to a set of algorithms or rules he wants a relationship and you know as depending on what you think as wonderful or as scary as ai is you can't have a relationship with a computer it's useful but you know my com well at least my computer doesn't speak talk back to me some people's do but mine doesn't i can't have a relationship with this but I can have a relationship with each of you. And so that's the risk that he took in giving us free will, is we can choose to follow or we can choose not to follow. Um, so, so Psalm 118 says, I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. So the choice is ours. And without the hope of redemption, we'd all be dead in our sins. Jesus died and rose again so that we could, could be redeemed. And we should never forget that. That's the ultimate gift and the ultimate thing that we should be grateful for. 1 Peter 1.8 says, You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. So God's plan of redemption should produce in us 
an immense gratitude. And personally, I'll never forget the day that I accepted Jesus. Um, I'd grown up in the church. I'd been going since I had to be carried. But at 16, I realized that I needed to make a choice. I needed to decide what I was going to do with that gift of redemption. And I really realized that it was me, my choice to decide how I was going to respond. And so somebody prayed with me and I received the Lord. And the next morning I read John 15, 16. You did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. So that's God's plan for us. He has chosen us. And that's the paradox of redemption. God chose us, but we have to choose him. We have to respond to his choice by choosing to accept it. And if you've not accepted Jesus' redemption today personally, Today's a great day to do that. So I was 16, but it's never too late. So please pray with me for a minute. Jesus, thank you for dying with me. Thank you that because you rose from the dead, I can have eternal life. I repent of my sins and accept you as my Savior and Lord. Please take my life and use it as you desire. Holy Spirit, please fill me and transform me. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, please come and talk with me or one of the prayer team during the ministry time. And we'd love to talk to you more about what it means to have God's redemption in your life. And redemption is an ongoing process, you know, We don't just become perfect when we accept Jesus. We then have to walk out God's plan for us day by day. So beyond redemption, God has a personal plan for each of us. So we don't just get saved and sit back and wait for heaven. We have to live out this life in the way that he's chosen. So the second area I want to look at is God's personal plan for us. Psalm 139, 16 says, You saw who you created me to be before I became me, before I'd even seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. So God created you with a plan in mind. He had things for you to do and things that he wanted to do through you and things he wants to do for you. So our future is defined by God's plan for us, not our past. And Philippians 3, Paul says, Not that I have already attained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. (coughs) Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We all make mistakes, or at least I know I do. Maybe some of you are perfect. I haven't got there yet. And God knows this. But our mistakes don't negate what God has planned for us. He's able to work around our mistakes and still accomplish what his plan, his plan for us. But the key is to keep pressing forward and not give up. And I remember as a teenager when I was learning how to sail, growing up in England, you know, there was a lot of water around. Um, but my instructor told me that it's impossible to steer a boat that isn't moving. If you turn the tiller and the boat's not moving, nothing happens. So that's what God, That's how we are with God. If we keep moving forward, then God can steer us in the ways he wants us to go. If we just sit in the chair, God's not able to move us. So keep pressing on. And, you know, that sounds like 
a striving thing. If I just, you know, pull up my boots and keep going, I'll be fine. But no, it's, again, that relationship with God. We keep moving. God moves with us. We have other people to help us. And so, you know, it's not a, a, a striving thing, but it is a heart thing of wanting to move into the things that God has. And sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed with the idea that God has a future planned out for us. You know, I, I'm a very detailed person, so it's easy for me to think, okay, God has a plan for me. I have to work out what God wants me to do every second of every day for the rest of my life. <gasps> no, that's not how it is. Yeah, no. And so I'm learning to take one day at a time. Instead of big picture right there of what am I supposed to do for the rest of my life, I think, okay, God, what do you want me to do today? And I try to pray each morning and ask God, use me how you want me to use used today. Steer me to the people I'm supposed to meet. Give me the words to talk to people. And, you know, I, I believe that when I look back on my life, it won't be made up of these big picture things. It'll be made up of a lot of days. You know, what do I do today? And then what do I do tomorrow? And all those days will come together of walking in obedience to God. And it's, it's like a tapestry. Some of you know I'm a sewer. I do a lot of craft stuff. And usually when you have a tapestry, you have a picture, and it's all planned out. And you know that you put this color here and that color there. But that's not God's tapestry. God's tapestry is we don't see the picture ahead of time. We just see God doing the stitches. And when our life is over, I believe, we'll see that tapestry as a beautiful picture. What we thought was just one little thing here is actually part of God's big plan for making a beautiful picture of who we are. And God's plan for our lives involves other people. We don't walk alone. We looked at this last week, that we're grateful for each other. And so God puts us in groups. I believe that God has put every single one of you here today for a reason. And that's part of his plan. And we can support each other and encourage each other. And last week, Christian talked about Exodus 17, where Joshua is doing the fighting and... Moses is up there holding up his arm and Aaron and her come alongside him and help him to hold up. And so it needed all of the people involved to gain victory. So even though God has a personal plan for us, none of us can achieve it on our own. God works out that plan together with other people. And the world tries to tell us that only the people who do big things in life are successful, you know? The, the actors, I know a lot of new movies came out this weekend, and so the ones that make the most money are the ones that are most successful. And those actors are the ones that people remember. Um, or the billionaires that make a lot of money, they're seen as important and given special status. But that's not how God thinks, see, sing. The one who makes the coffee is just as important as the one who preaches. A church of a hundred is just as successful in God's eyes as a church of a thousand. You know, helping someone across the street is just as <coughs> excuse me, just as um, much a gift of love as the person who gives a thousand dollars to the church. So to God, obedience is what is important. And I remember a while back I was praying and I was talking to God about how I couldn't do things as well as my friend Jill. 
And I very clearly heard God speak to my heart and say, I don't need another Jill. I need a Jane. I need, this was God speaking to me, saying, I need you to be who I made you to be, not to be a carbon copy of somebody else. And <clears throat> so my job is to try and be the best Jane that I can be with his help, of course, and with the help of others. And another mistake we, think we make when thinking about God's plan for us is that it's an all or nothing mentality. You know, we think, as I said, we think if we made a mistake, it blows God's whole plan for us. And that's not true either. You know, when I drive to church, there's several different ways that I can come. You know, I can take the interstate, I can take a side road, but the important thing is that I get to church. You know, and so sometimes it's not those um, little details of do I go to this thing or not go to this thing? Do I, you know, what if I mess up? What if I um, don't do everything perfectly that God has asked me to do? Um, that doesn't negate God's plan for us. <coughs> you know, Romans 8, 28 tells us that we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good, for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. So we need to be careful about try getting into this works mentality or this striving that I have to do everything perfectly. And the other part of that is things don't always happen in our timing. You know, this is one that I struggle with. And it's like, God, why haven't you done this yet? You know, and then we think, you know, if it hasn't happened now, it will never happen, you know, and so we give up. And so, again, driving home from church last week, I got delayed on Woodman because of an accident and sat basically for 10 minutes trying to get past this accident, but I still got home. It wasn't my timing. It wasn't what I would have wanted. And so sometimes things delay us, but God can still fulfill his plan. So trust God to work all things together for good, things that don't make any sense to you. But God is still working. He's above it all. He's able to work it out. And so the third area that I want to look at is God's plan for our eternal future. You know, this is part of what keeps me going day by day, is it's not just about life on this earth. It's not just about going to work every day. It's that I have an eternal future. I'm going to get to see God face to face. You know, for me, there's, that's what keeps me going. Is, and I want God to be proud of me. When I get to see God, I want him to say those words, well done, good and faithful servant. And uh, um, John 10, 28 says, I gave them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Or Revelation 21, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and eliminate death entirely. No one will mourn or weep any longer. The pain of wounds will no longer exist. But the old order has ceased. And that's what we're, we're heading towards. You know, that's what keeps us going. And the older I get, the more I look forward to eter eternity. You know, when I was 20, my life seemed like it was really long and eternity was just kind of somewhere out there in the future. Now that I'm in my 60s, eternity is a little closer. Um, and there's been a lot more of the difficulties, a lot more of the pain and suffering. And so when I hear that God's going to wipe all that away, that means a whole lot more to me than it did 
when I was in my 20s. And 1 Corinthians 13 says, this is one of my favorite verses, for now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries, as though reflected in a mirror, but one day we will see face to face. You know, and we did a little bit of worship already this morning, and it was wonderful, you know, it's like, yes, but imagine our worship when we see God face to face, when there's nothing between us, you know, when we're like the angels and we see him, you know, how I long for that day. But that's not an excuse to give up on today. Rather, the opposite. It's what motivates me to keep going today, to do what is right now. You know, as I said, I want God to be proud of me. I love him because he loves me. But I use that love to motivate me to obey him now. And thinking about our eternal future ties back to God's plan of redemption. What we decide to do with God's offer of redemption will determine where we spend our eternal future. God's desire is for us to be with him, both in this life and eternity. And redemption was his plan to achieve that. But again, it's our choice. You know, life is tough. I don't know about you, but I have days where it's like, God, if you don't come through, I'm not going to make it. But God comes through constantly. And so we were never designed to live life without God, either here on earth or in eternity. So he made a way for us to be able to live with him if we will take it. And that's the key. It comes down to our choice. So what difference does having a hopeful future make in our lives? It starts with an attitude of gratitude. On my most difficult day, I can still be gratitude that God, still be grateful that God has plans for me. Good plans. And our gratitude can be expressed by asking God to show us how to move forward with him, how to walk into the plans that he has for us. And as a church, we've just built, bought this building but that's not the end, you know. It's not like, okay, we've arrived. We find, after 40 years, we finally bought a building. Yay! And, you know, I'm with the rest of you. I'm like, yay! I don't know about you, but it feels different. Yeah, you know, I've been part of this church for over 30 years. And it feels different to walk into a building that we own. I don't know why. Couldn't get into all the details of it, but there's a difference. But that's not the end. You know, God's plan for this church and for this building is to use it as a tool to accomplish the plans that he has for us as a church and for this neighborhood, for being able to reach out. So we are grateful for his provision, but now let's use that to glorify him, to reach those around us and to impact lives. And while we don't focus on the past, we can use it to increase our gratitude that he has brought us this far. There's been many times in my life where and I, I've wondered what on earth God was doing. His plans made no sense to me whatsoever, and they seemed to be the opposite of what I wanted. I remember when I first came to the States in 1991, I thought I was only here for six months. I was trying to figure out how to get my, my visa in Nepal had been refused. So I came to the States for six months to get my visa figured out. 33 years later, I'm still here and I never got back to Nepal. But I look at the, the, all the things that have happened in those 33 years that wouldn't have happened if I'd gone back to Nepal. If, <clears throat> if I'd had my way, you know, all of the people that God has had me interact with, that that was God's plan for me. So I'm grateful, even though I don't understand it, and especially at the time, 
I was not very grateful. But looking back, I'm grateful for the ways that God has led me. So are you struggling with understanding what God's up to? And faith is what helps us hold on when we don't understand God's plan. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith brings our hope into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. So while, like Paul, we don't focus on the past, we do use it to encourage us. And one of my favorite songs says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. So when I'm in those times of doubt and uncertainty, I instead of looking to the future and thinking, I don't know how this is going to work out, I look to the past and say, okay, God, you did it back then. You can do it again. You know, God's not going to stop being faithful. You know, he's not going to say, oops, that's it. You've run out of your store of faithfulness. <coughs> don't get any more. You've got to just hang in there for the rest of your life. No. God is faithful, and he will see us through. So I'm grateful for what God has done in the past because it helps me know that he'll be there in the future. So where are you this morning? Maybe you're just starting out in life and the future seems far away and unattainable. Maybe you're bogged down in the day-to-day -day struggles of life. Work, children, family, and the idea of God adding one more thing for you to do is too much. Maybe you think it's too late, that you've, God could never use you, that you've messed up too much too many times. But wherever you are, I want to encourage you that God does have a marvelous plan for you. Not just a somewhat good plan, not just a, oh, I guess I have to make things work out for this people, but a marvelous plan for you. And so allow him to lead you day by day, to encourage you today that he has not given up on you. And I believe that's part of God's word for, you, for s someone here this morning, is God has not given up on you. You may think he has, but God hasn't. So don't give up on God. And don't give up on yourself. So I would encourage you, if you're struggling today, we're going to have a prayer team at the back during the next section of worship. Or come and talk to me at the front here. Because God's plan is for us to support each other. Um, so now as we go back into that time of worship, we believe that God's, the Holy Spirit speaks to us for today, that it's not just that the Holy Spirit fell back on the disciples, but that he's here today. And so I want to share with you something that I read in my daily devotion after I had written this message. And it's a book by Jonathan Kahn called The Book of Mysteries. And it, it's just a daily reading that opens up all sorts of things about God's word. And this one was called Desert Rains. And I believe this is for us as a church, for our future. <clears throat> so it says, there were several rains in recent days, mostly during the night. In the morning, the sun came out and the teacher invited me to join him on a hike through the desert, which, which I did. He brought me to a mountain ridge that overlooked a vast expanse of valleys, hills, and other mountains. Do you remember this? The teacher asked. I brought you here before. But it looks different, completely different now, I replied. What's different? asked the teacher. When I was here last, I said, except for a few scattered desert plants, it was dry and barren. But now the valleys are green, the hills are green, and there are plants everywhere. And over there was a dry riverbed. Now it's a river. It's kind of miraculous. 
It is, said the teacher. It's what happened when the rains come to the desert. Do you know why this desert blossomed so quickly? Because it was all there waiting to blossom. The seeds, the dry riverbed, the potential was all there waiting. Remember what you see here. It is a picture of redemption. The barren wilderness represents our lives without God. The rain is his spirit and the outpouring of his love and grace upon our lives. The blossoming of this wilderness tells us this. It doesn't matter how barren our lives have become or how hopeless any situation in our lives has become. It doesn't matter how dry and lifeless. All it takes are the rains of heaven. And that which is dormant and that which is dead and that which is hopeless will blossom again. And the seeds that he planted will spring up and our valleys will again be covered with green, and our riverbeds will flow with living water. The most barren of deserts is but a miracle waiting to happen. And your life is but a miracle waiting to happen. And I sense that the Holy Spirit is saying this morning that there are seeds that God has planted in you that you think will never come to fruition, that you think nothing can make this grow. But all it needs is the rain of God, his love pouring into you. And those seeds will blossom. So have faith. My, I want to speak over each one of you this morning. The rains are coming. And for some of you, the rains are already here, so enjoy it. This is the time in our service when we uh, just make room to respond to whatever the Lord has been doing in your heart. So if you feel like God has been uh, prompting you um, just to take a step of obedience, I really want to encourage you this morning. Uh, as Jane was talking about that, like the idea that God doesn't give us the whole plan from the beginning. He just gives us the next step. And I have a sense this morning that some of you feel like you know what that next step is, but it's a little scary. <laughs> And uh, I want to encourage you to get prayer this morning. Also, if you're sick in body in any way, uh, I feel like um, just uh, back problems are um, popping to my head today. If, if you're sick in body in any way, I want to encourage you to get prayer this morning as well. Um, and if you're not getting prayer back there, then I would encourage you to sing with us this morning, worship the Lord, and just uh, be in his presence. So would you stand with me if you're able? Find 
give you Surrender ourselves to you. Give you all. Surrender all to worthy of it all. You worthy of it all. For from you. this morning when uh, Jean was preaching and she was just offering an invitation for people to accept Jesus Christ for the first time. And I think it's important that from time to time we make a space to say like, we all like sheep have gone astray. We all like sheep sometimes wander off of the path and, and part of this is also just coming to a space of saying, Jesus, I've, I've been wandering for a while now and you know, I'm not really sure like what it is. What does it take to start over again? Jesus, can we just start over again? And I have a feeling this morning, sometimes we look for like some big thing to happen, some momentous part in our life to, uh, to happen, to have this occasion where we can say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start over again. And it can happen this morning. This can be one of those spaces this morning of saying, Jesus, I just recommit to this whole thing. I've been wandering around for a while, I've been doing my own thing, and I know I need to come back to you. I'm not really sure where to start. And it's the same conversation we started with before. Jesus, I surrender my life to you again. Lord, please forgive my wandering. I give you all of myself. Because he's worthy of it all. If that's you this morning, I want to encourage you, take that step. Take that step to recommit yourself to Jesus Christ. He's the God of second chances, third chances, and hundredth chances. This morning can be the thing, the thing that you've been waiting for, to say, Jesus, I recommit myself to you. Would you have your way in my life? I know. Let's sing it again. You're worthy of it all.
you are the holy and anointed one. You are the one who is worthy of all glory. Father, I pray as we go out from this place this morning, Lord, that we would just carry these, these reasons in our hearts for gratefulness, Father. That we would know that you are with us, Lord. Lord, whether we believe in our hearts to God that you are enough, that you are a shepherd and we lack nothing. Lord, that when things are hard, we have others, Lord. We have community around us if we would but reach out, Lord. That you've given us a family to belong to. And Lord, that when 
things look hard, when things look bleak, Lord, to know that you have a wonderful future in store for us. You were faithful before, that you will continue to be faithful because it is who you are. Even when we are faithless, Lord, you are faithful. Would you instill these things deep into our heart, God? That we can draw on them when we need to, Lord, and in any given moment, Lord, be able to rejoice because we know that you are with us and that you will work all things together for good. We love you, Father. We glorify you. We worship you. Lord, we seek to obey you. Give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear what you're doing in the world around us, Lord. At each given moment, even in those times when it feels like this is an interruption to the plans that I have, Lord, would we look and see what you are doing in them. And help us to be obedient, Father. Laying our own agendas aside, laying our own self-interest aside, Lord, to do faithfully what you've put before us. I pray for every heart here this morning, Lord, step of faithfulness is, Lord, that you would just reinforce it, Lord, would you still stir it, Lord, that all of us would know what you're inviting us into, and how we can just take that next step towards you, Lord, give us the courage, give us the courage, Lord, if it requires sacrifice, if it looks like it threatens our own self-interest, Lord, give us the courage to step one step closer to you. this life costs us, Lord, you are worth it. We ask that you would have your way in our hearts, have your way in our lives. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for worshiping with us this morning. God bless you as you go this week. I pray the Lord gives you many opportunities to express the gratitude that you have. Hope you have a great week. Have safe travels. We'll hope to see you next time. Thank you.